This lesson is part of the TI Inspire CX CAS Technology Student Course. In this lesson, we will look at geometry tools in the graphs application. We'll start by opening a graphs application, page 1.1. We'll want to use relational graphing with y equals instead of f of x equals. So from the graphs menu, select graph entry edit, then choose relation. In this space, type y equals x squared and press enter. The graph appears as an upright parabola with a turning point at the origin, 0, 0. Now suppose we want to explore lines that are tangent to this parabola. This means that the line just grazes the parabola. It just touches the parabola, then moves away again as the parabola curves. Using the menu, Choose Geometry, then Points and Lines, then Tangent. Now, a really useful feature of the Geometry menu is that once you select the action you want to perform, here it's drawing a tangent line to the parabola, you use the touchpad to guide the cursor arrow to the upper left corner of the screen and place it over the icon symbolizing that action. A detailed instruction then appears telling you how to perform that action. Often, it specifies the order in which multiple steps need to be followed. Here, we're told to first click using the click pad on the object. Here, it's the parabola. And then select a location on the parabola at which the tangent needs to be drawn. Click again to lock the tangent line onto the parabola. Now, don't be concerned if you haven't been able to place it exactly where you wanted it. We can alter the coordinates of the point of tangency later. It's very important now to press Escape to leave the Tangent submenu, as if you don't, your Inspire will be looking to keep finding more tangent lines. One will do the job nicely. Notice now that the icon in the top left corner has disappeared and the equation of the tangent line appears near the line and the point of tangency. Look now at the click pad. You'll notice a small closed hand appears. This will be the symbol you'll look for when you've grabbed an object on the screen, and it's activated when you use the touchpad to guide the cursor to the object's location. Then press and hold down the click pad. The cursor changes from an arrow to an open hand to a closed hand. Let's start with lengthening the tangent line as it's a bit short. Guide the cursor to one of the arrow ends of the line and wait for the cursor to have changed to an open hand. You may notice that it says either line or relation and that by pressing the tab key, you can toggle between the two. This happens because there's very little space between the line and the parabola and Inspire is asking which of these two objects you're referring to. Be sure it says line. Now press and hold down the click pad, and the hand will close. You have now grabbed the end of the line. Use the touchpad to pull the end of the line in the direction you want, here to apparently lengthen it, and then release your grip on the line by pressing Escape. The hand will open. Do the same for the other arrow end of the line. Be sure to release your grip using Escape. You can grab the point of tangency in the same way and move it through the parabola. Note, it will stay on the parabola and not move out into, say, one of the quadrants. As before, move your arrow cursor now to the point of tangency and make sure, using Tab to toggle if necessary, it says point on before you press and hold the click pad to grab the point. Move the point around a bit to the left side and release your grip by pressing escape. Now suppose we want this tangent line in a specific location, say at the point 2-4. After guiding the arrow cursor to the current point of tangency, where it will become a hand, Keep the hand open, then press Control, 
then menu, then coordinates and equations. Now grab the text with the coordinates as before and move it away from the graph. Now hover the cursor over the x-coordinate of the point and double click. The x-coordinate should be highlighted and the cursor should be flashing. As we want to change the point to 2, 4, just press 2, then enter, and the required tangent line will be placed at 2, 4. The coordinates can be placed closer to the point if desired. Now, how about the normal line at that point? That is, many of you know, the line which is perpendicular to the tangent line at the point of tangency. From the menu, select Geometry, then Construction, then Perpendicular. Once again, an icon appears in the upper left corner. Guide the cursor to that icon, and you're instructed to first click the line you want this to be perpendicular to, so click on the tangent line, then guide the point until it says Point On and the parabola is highlighted. Again, toggle the tab if necessary, and click it to lock it there. Be sure to press Escape to get out of this perpendicular sub-menu. Extend the ends of this line. They won't be arrows, as done before, making sure the left end passes through the parabola again. To find where this perpendicular intersects with the parabola again, from the menu, once again select Geometry, then Points and Lines, then Intersection Points. Following the icon's instructions, select by clicking the parabola and the perpendicular in any order. Press Escape to get out of the Intersection submenu. Using techniques shown before to find the coordinates of this new point, Guide the cursor to the point, press Control, then Menu, and select Coordinates and Equations. Finally, we'll find the distance between the two points 24 and negative 2.25 and 5.0625. But first, we need to create a line segment between the points. Press Menu, then Geometry, then Points and Lines, then segment. Use the icon's instructions to click on each point, any order will do, and the line segment will be momentarily highlighted. Press Escape to leave the segment submenu. Now return via the menu to Geometry, then Measurement, then Length. The icon requests you to select the object you wish to measure. If it first says Line, press Tab to toggle to Segment. And the segment will be highlighted, and the measurement will be ghosted, awaiting your decision. Sort of like asking you, are you sure? Double-click, and the measurement, which is approximately 4.4 units, will now be fully visible. Press Escape to remove yourself from the Measurement sub-menu. Move that measurement to a convenient location on the screen. That's all for this lesson. Be sure to check out the other videos in this course.